back to Lowdown, a show produced by the students at the University of Central Missouri in Warrensburg. I'm Anaya Smith. And I'm Ronjanae Hill. Thanks for joining us this evening as we continue to delve into all the cool things happening here at UCM. Speaking of, we'll look at a couple students that work right here at KMOS. And we'll pop over to the Union to attend the For the Culture event and sit in on the Ghanaian Dance Recital. Oh gosh, um, what's it like working at KMOS? Every company has an individual or team behind every social media post or marketing campaign, and here at KMOS, we are no different. Sydney Kerr, a UCM student, is responsible for the majority of social media postings as well as campaigns to help raise money for the station. We sat down with Sydney to ask her in greater detail what it is she does here at UCM as well as KMOS. I am a public relations major and I am minoring in graphic design. So uh, my work at KMOS consists of a lot, honestly. Um, so I do the social media. Um, I have a calendar that I work on um, constantly, so we're constantly updating it um, on Twitter and on Facebook, and we started the Instagram, so that was cool to do. Um, I also work on corporate support stuff, so I help with proposals. Um, I'll do graphic design work. I'll work on our fundraising campaigns, all kinds of different stuff that has to do with development. My work at KMOS um, relates to my major um, because it's kind of everything that I want to do. Um, obviously PR, we do social media all the time. Um, it's a huge part of our work um, because just we're connecting, we're trying to get our messages out there to the public um, and that's just like part of what we do is social media. Um, it also relates because I did a campaign for um, KMOS. It was called Como Gives. It was our fundraising campaign. And part of PR is we put on campaigns. That's a huge part um, of what we do. Um, we'll probably do that all the time. So it's what I'm going to be doing in my real career. So like getting to do that here is amazing that I have. I already have this experience of put, doing a campaign. So Como Gives um, is a fundraising campaign that the Columbia area puts on. So what they do is they have nonprofits in the Columbia area. So technically, we, since we are not from there, but we broadcast to that area, that's our largest viewing area, we were able to join that. We got invited to join it this year. It was our first time. So that was amazing that we got invited to do it because it's a way for us to gain money, not just in our regular membership or like pledge drives and stuff like that. So it was a way for us to reach a broader audience. Um, so with that, obviously, we raised $6,445 just through that campaign, and we ended up being number 33 on the leaderboard um, out of 110. So I thought that was amazing. I really do like the people here. My boss, Nicole, um, she's super cool. Um, we'll always have conversations about random stuff sometimes, which is nice because we get out of the work cycle, if that makes sense. Um, so it's not just work, work, work. It's like we actually have more than that. I get a lot of benefits from just working here. Obviously I get paid, so that's a plus, but I also get the experience that I need. So everything that I've done has helped me in my career because I was able to get another internship last summer because of this job, because I had experience um, with working with real graphics and a real social media channel. Um, so, and I've also like, done the Como Gives fundraising campaign too, so that helps with my experience in um, executing a campaign and like evaluating that too. So it just helps with my experience a lot. So I guess beyond college and KMOS, I'm hoping to get a job, obviously, which KMOS is already helping tremendously because I've had interviews already and like just because of like what KMOS has done, um, I'm able to talk about that stuff. So I'm really hoping to get a job in Kansas City, um, and then go from there. <laughs> Reporting for Lowdown, I'm Jacob Clark. So I actually end up working with um, our servers and our, our information, or our, let me try that again, because I can't think of words now. At Came West, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. One of the most important departments is one that gets overlooked the most often, and that is our master control. One of the many students helping run Master Control is Aaron Lightfoot. 
We sat down with Aaron to ask him about his involvement here at KMOS and how it has affected him. So my work here at KMOS consists of me checking programs to make sure that everything is going to go on air smoothly. Uh, it also consists of me making sure that our signals are being transmitted smoothly and that everything that's on air works the way it should be. We're considered to be one of the last lines of defense for, for KMOS and making sure that everything goes out is part of what we do. And it's an enjoyable experience, but it can be stressful, but it's also great because I get to make sure everyone sees our great content. Uh, my major is a computer science with an emphasis in video game design. And um, honestly, I didn't know that my job would, uh, that I could end up working for KMOS, but I was reached out towards by uh, some people who work here and they told me about the student involvement and it looked like something I would really enjoy and it's turned out to be a really great experience. My major is entailed in this because I end up working with the server room and all of our equipment that we have here and it's a lot of hands-on experience as opposed to actual like programming that comes with, CS, uh, with the CS degree but instead I get to work with how everything's handled hardware wise and because of that and with my internship that I have with the um, engineers now I actually can get to see behind the scenes a little bit and understand how everything works so there's a lot of correlation between my major and what, what I do here. So I knew that I wanted to kind of explore more options here at the station and through talking to people they were more than willing to help me out so I ended up getting an internship with the engineers um, and it ended up changing what I do because not only now do I monitor everything that goes on air, I now actually get to work with the equipment behind everything and because of that I get to see how our signal goes from satellite to satellite to viewers at home and I get to work on issues that may arise throughout our towers or anything like that and there's a lot more behind it that I didn't know about and it's really cool to, to even go on my third day to go see a 2,000 foot tower. You know, I love working at KMOS. Um, it's easily by far my best job I've ever had and it's not something I never knew that I could end up doing and it's definitely helped open my eyes to looking at potential uh, workplaces for me in the future because beyond KMOS and beyond college I'm looking for uh, moving to a place uh, a little bit outside of Missouri that I want to just kind of get away from home for a little while and figure out what I want to do. Uh, but because of KMOS, I've actually been looking at trying to get employment at other PBS stations because I've enjoyed it so much that I know I would like to, to do it anywhere else. And it's, it's been a great, job, a great job to have and I know that it's something that's going to help me out. PBS has been a very great uh, organization for me. Growing up, I never thought I would work for the station that sent my mom and my dad Antiques Roadshow because I hated that as a kid. But now I look forward to watching it at work because it's something that's part of my job and it's something that I get to do and I get to make sure that everyone in this area gets to see quality content that just is not un unprecedented. You're never going to see it on anything else because it's publicly funded and it's just stuff that you're going to be thankful for and it's nice to know that I'm making a difference in this area. Reporting for Lowdown, I'm Jacob Clark. Any questions you want to redo? All of them? Wait, I gotta stop, wait, I'm sorry. I gotta stop laughing. All right. Coming to cheer at first was pretty cool. Um, I walked on, tried out for the team and uh, it's a really fun family atmosphere. Turned out pretty well. Since joining cheer, I've learned a lot of new skills. Throwing up a girl in the air itself was a new skill for me. Um, it's my first time cheering. Being a part of a pyramid is a new skill that I learned. And just uh, learn how to lift up a girl is uh, way different than weights I've learned, but uh, it's, it's a new skill in itself as well. When we come to a basketball game, we arrive a little early. We go over player intro, what pyramids we're gonna do for the game, and uh, what stunts we should throw. Uh, we practice some of the cheers and what signs we're gonna need for the game. And just pretty much is a, it's an overview of what we're going to do for the day. UCM cheer staff is a professional, you know, in any manner, during practice, during games. They keep our heads on straight and make sure we're working hard, cheering for the teams, being loud, you know, doing our jobs.
What helped me get to where I am now is just taking it serious during practice, you know, keeping my ears and my eyes open, like from, from my teammates, taking their advice and just learning by experience, learning as I go. Honestly, when I joined the cheer team, I didn't know what to expect, but uh, now I cheer because I just love the family atmosphere. It keeps me busy. And it's just fun being a part of the UCM cheer squad, like being a part of the school community, like having a part, feeling like I'm uh, something bigger than myself, you know, part of a team. What I like about cheer, I don't know, I don't know if there's anything I don't like about cheer. I like the team atmosphere, of course. I love like the laughter that comes along with it, the experience, the like so much knowledge that you pick up during cheer, so many different skills that you pick up during cheer that you can apply to other things such as lifting or just communicating in general. In my spare time, we have like out of practice practice, so like open stunning and uh, that helps me with some of my skills, just bouncing ideas off of each other with other players, uh, correcting mistakes and yeah, just you know, practice, repetition, that's kind of what helps me outside of practice. I have run into some obstacles. Um, when I joined cheer, I thought it was going to be easier than I thought, but it is not the case. That's a lot of skill that goes into it, a lot of hard time, a lot of hard work that goes into it. And yeah, I mean, yeah, just cheering itself, just being a part of the team and learning to work as one with a whole bunch of others, that's pretty much a, the obstacle that I've run into. I would say overall cheer, it's a, it's a fun time, you know, it's a family atmosphere. It's, it's something that helps you learn how to do teamwork, it helps you with your skills, keeps you in shape more than you would think. And just, uh, yeah, cheer is, cheer is not easy, it's no joke, it's a sport. It's a sport like every other sport. Cheer is, uh, I don't know, it's one of my new loves, you know, it's one of my, it's something that I'm going to keep with me forever. Even if I don't cheer, it might be a hobby to go, you know, to an open gym and open stunt. But uh, yeah, I will say that cheer is now a new big part of me. Also, another thing, we have a clinic on April 7th, and then we also have trials on April 8th. So anybody that's interested definitely should come out. Go Mules. <laughs>
um, can really teach you the tradition um, seriously and uh, with kind of a great approach. So I emailed him and from there we just started talking over Skype and take, I took lessons with him over Skype and then eventually we brought him here in person. The reason that I wanted to study music and dance from Ghana is because I feel it is a way of making music that really helps students expand the way they think about music making and also it's just really really fun. So I wanted to learn it so that I could bring it to my students because I know that when I studied it I had a really good time. The best part of learning dance from Nani Belly was just seeing how much passion and energy he has for it. The steps of course are something that you have to learn but the steps don't come out unless you give it your all and Nani has so much energy and he has so much passion for this um, music and dance that it's infectious and it's hard not to have a really good time when you're doing it. Reporting for Lowdown, this is Anaya Smith. February 28th, African Studies held a For the Culture event in W.C. Morris. My name is Raven Alade. I am a senior at the university. I major in psychology and I minor in Africana Studies. The event held today was held by um, my organization called Africana Studies Leadership Council, which I'm president of. And I, um, I uh, the, the event was called For the Culture, and it's basically an event about celebrating the consciousness and the community of the black culture. And we wanted to mainly focus on bringing unity to the campus and unity amongst um, the Warrensburg community as well as uh, building allies with black culture and just celebrating everybody. So for the culture, it's all about celebrating the black community, our culture in general through our creative arts, through our talents, and really trying to exemplify what culture means to us and how we see it. And we wanted to show that not only to other black people, but allies. So that means Hispanics, white people, the whole board, because we wanted to, we want this event to have unity and we wanted to build allies and we wanted to build the unity that we kind of don't see in this world. So we wanted it to be impactful in a way to bring people together. Facing the rising sun. <laughs> Having black talent or showcasing black entrepreneurship, we wanted to have that as well as build the unity that we're we're literally crying out for. We want unity and we want to build a system and build a community of all and not just divided and we wanted to break down that division that's commonly that like commonly lay barriers amongst our community and what Black History Month means to me really is just to celebrate and be unapologetic about my blackness and know that my truth it may be um, the past may have really affected us in terrible ways but we also built strength and we came out of a lot of bondage and we're still overcoming and we're building a better tomorrow for the future generations of black people and we want to recognize that so that's what black history must mean to me we have control over the following impressions waiting for the battle to be won but we aren't suited up for the war complaints flowing like rivers from mouths of people but who don't even like to swim let's clean up the wreckage of brokenness and build up beauty thank you yeah. I was invited uh, by Kayla Collins um, and so she called me up and asked if, if we would come out and just give a little inspirational uh, talk. Uh, she wanted initially for my wife to speak about the book that we wrote, uh, What Makes a Strong Marriage, but uh, once we got here and, and, and witnessed what kind of event it was, I thought it'd be a, a much better, more appropriate uh, to just give an inspirational uh, uh, talk. So honestly, um, I wasn't very familiar with the uh, Africana Studies here at UCM. Um, uh, as most of you are probably already aware, uh, the city of Warrensburg is about 97, 96% uh, Caucasian, white. Um, and so I wasn't sure what to expect uh, once I got here, but I was pleasantly surprised uh, by the Africana Studies uh, department and, and their presentation in closing out Black History Month. UCM President Chuck Ambrose was also in attendance. He gave us some thoughts on the event. 
for me to be able to participate and, and see their, um, it's kind of a culminating work, you know, it's spring semester, uh, being a senior, uh, the energy, uh, the, the art, artistic, cultural, um, sense of community that this event presents to the university is just really powerful, so I'm always glad to be a part. Tonight was kind of special because today was an important day in the life of UCM where we, we know what we can do to support student success and provide it to every student and we're going to take some steps and many of the things that we're going to do, students like Raven and Keontae have been the inspiration for us to consider the how. So it is just a great night. The University of Central Missouri campus is, is very important because we've one of the fastest growing uh, campuses and serving African-American students, Hispanic students, students of more than one race. So you know, we're, we're, we pay attention because there's something special here and this is one part of that celebration. Reporting from Lowdown, I'm Brendan Wade. The UCM event showcase was held in the student union on February 15th. We talked with Amy Jenkins about the purpose and significance of this event. The UCM event showcase is just an opportunity for all the different vendors on campus to come together in one location and kind of advertise the products and services that we have to offer. We can do everything from host your event to provide the music, the entertainment. We have casino tables, we have inflatables, you can go out to Pirtle Golf Spray. There's just so many different things, and if you're not on campus, you're not always aware of all the things that you can rent out and do. We started meeting about three or four months ago, and a lot of the different focus areas on campus that have things that they provide, such as the Rec, Sodexo, the Union, Mean Conference Services, Bookstore, all got together and kind of said what their vision was for the event and then talked about the different services they could provide and then our GAs really played a key role in kind of planning everything out, getting together a social media plan and promoting it and then lining up all of the prizes and all the vendors that would attend. Well, it's funny that I'm here today. I'm also helping uh, with the coordination of the event. Uh, the Sodexo catering team and the marketing team have put together the event with a couple of other people that were instrumental from the UCM side. Um, our dining services, uh, dining halls were also involved. So I'm here to represent Sodexo on a larger scale, basically letting everybody know that there's more to offer than just the retail side of the food and, and the dining hall options. I'm just hoping that um, the, the biggest thing would be community involvement, letting everybody know that there's a lot of things that Sodexo can offer uh, from a catering standpoint to the dining halls, to event space, to the things that we can do for them, whether big or whether small, no matter how the size of your party, no matter the uh, event space size, there are a lot of options here. Just kind of basically want to get that out to everybody, not just for UCM people. Today's event just seemed pretty fun. I think it was something different. I've been here for two years already, and I'm like, I don't think I heard of it last year. So coming through and just listening to what other people have to say, what uh, Sodexo is bringing out, you know, different ideas, um, spin as well, you know, what they have going on, but as well as just other resources on campus that students can come out to that are fun, uh, like bowling and stuff. I think that's always pretty fun for me. I think Sodexo plays a big part on campus, especially since we have residence halls and you know they're the ones that provide the food in their dining halls. Uh, getting involved with them, trying to see what kind of resources or feedback we can give them uh, as they move forward, but as well as how we can help our students with dietary needs. There's a lot more students I'm finding out that have like that are gluten free, can't have uh, certain foods, and can't have foods that are mixed with other things. So trying to figure that out for them. It 
it was fun. I enjoyed it. I think uh, coming out, not knowing what to expect, but coming in here and just having the live music that was going on a little bit earlier ago, but as well as the games that we that you guys have here that were provided. Um, and then just being able to speak with people, I think the vibe's really nice and I enjoy it. So, you know, I really enjoyed it. It was good. hoping for is to let the community know that we are here and that we're not just here for campus use but we're here for community use so really anyone from the community can come in and use our services we're here local and it's just a really nice opportunity especially in these budget conscious times to just bring in additional revenue and spread word of mouth about all the services we have to offer reporting for lowdown I'm Faith Slaughter Unfortunately, that's all the time we have left tonight, but do not fear. The show in its entirety and individual segments can be found on our King West TV YouTube page. Thanks for joining us this evening. I'm Ron Janae Hill. And I'm Anaya Smith. Good night. Good night.